I'm Tom Ray from the band Lorenzo's Music, and you're listening to the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. Originally, I was going to be talking to an artist that was in Europe. But as I went to edit that episode, I, I have no idea where it went. It disappeared. So I had to contact the person, and we're going to be talking again next week. I've never had that happen before. It's super weird. So I'm going to move to the next interview I did, which is somebody that actually lives in my town. She's an R&B artist who just released her first album. I'm Synovia Knox. I'm 21 years old. I'm a senior at UW-Madison, and I'm a singer-songwriter, fine arts major, African-American studies major. I feel like that's a synopsis of what I do. I actually met her because there's another podcast I do about artists called American Bandito at AmericanBandito.com. And one of the people that I interviewed on that show posted on her Instagram page, this person performing. And I was very impressed. She's really good. So keeping in line with the whole, I just want to meet more musicians and see what they do. I reached out to her and we decided to meet in downtown Madison. We're sitting at a park. It was a lovely day. Actually, right now it's winter as I'm posting this. So editing this made me really nostalgic for this summer. You can just hear the outside weather being nice. So she tells me a lot about how she's going to promote her stuff, how she recorded it. She self-produced it and she's distributing it all herself, but she also has a collective that she works with, which I thought was really intriguing. So we sat down and just kind of talked about what it is we do. I'm in the first wave hip hop and urban arts program here at UW. What's that? That program is called First Wave. They bring in a new group of artists each year from around the country and internationally. In my cohort, which is the ninth, uh, they call it a cohort every time they bring in a new group. I'm in the ninth cohort. Um, we have a girl from China. We have people from Minneapolis, New Orleans, Atlanta, all over the world, really. And they bring them in so that we can talk about subjects that are kind of difficult to digest um, and they feel like the best way for subjects like racism, bullying, anti-Semitism, anything like that um, are best received through arts because it's a language without barrier. Like as far as you can understand it, you can hear what people mean through song, through dance, through movement and whatever way that is best for you to digest it, we hope to have something that can, you know, bridge the gap of understanding. So that's basically what the scholarship is and they bring us here to campus and they pay for tuition for us to come here and produce art about our experiences here as people of color and our experiences here as they intersect with everything here in Madison. How did you get involved with it or get in the program to begin with? Well, first you have to apply to the UW and get in, um, and then it's a separate scholarship application process. Um, you have to send in videos of the art that you create. What did you send in? I sent in some videos of me singing in the choir. Um, this was before I had started to experiment with writing my own music. I only sing other people's music at this point, only covers, um, and I mostly sing with my church choir. So I think I sent in some choreography videos from high school, cheerleading, yeah, in my <laughs> choir videos. I had my choir to back me up and we sang one of my favorite songs. Well, that doesn't um, hurt. <laughs> yeah, it was great, it was great. Um, and I actually, like, it was so crazy. Um, they came to talk to West like two days before the applications were due and I was like oh my gosh how am I gonna get this done like I don't think I'm gonna apply and my avid teacher Miss Noyson she was like if there was anything that was a scholarship that ever had your name on it it's this and so I basically slept at her house for the next two days trying to get both the application process done and the artistic portfolio yeah. I sent it in and about two months later that was history and my parents were like well, now you have a choice. You've gotten into some out-of-state schools, but you could also be debt-free and stay home with us. <laughs> wink, wink. And I was like, okay, okay. I see where this is going. Yeah. I will stay. I'll stay. Yeah. <laughs> the debt-free thing is something that probably wasn't a factor, but it really is helpful. It is super hel helpful. And it's also like, you. I always knew that college was on my path. So paying for it was always one of those things. Like, I was prepared to take out a loan. 
I was prepared to do anything I needed to do because that piece of paper opens so many doors, no matter what I want to do. At this point, I was still like, hmm, I really like art, but I don't want to be a starving artist. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm going to go for education. Um, but even then, the scholarship was like, you are allowed to go for whatever major that you feel that you want to partake in. Cool. We would just like you to produce art while you're here because we feel like you're talented. So yeah. it seems like a no-brainer to at least apply. And once I got in, it really began my process as an artist, seeing poets come in, performing their original works, working myself into their art as they write, movement artists, working my songs into their art. And then it became important for me to tailor that work to myself. That's when I knew I needed to start to write and record because, you know, you can use other people's words to explain how you feel for so long before you're like, hmm, yeah. I have something I'd like to say too. <laughs> how did you go about recording those? My cohort brother, his name is Quan Logan. He has a studio in his apartment. Okay. And we were roommates, so it was all super like, easy transitioning from going to just living there, watching him record, to recording myself. We just recorded it at a home studio and we're both going upon our musical paths and it's really great that we're intersecting because he can practice with my voice. We've worked with the lowest studio equipment to the highest um, and I feel like that has just shown growth. Like, I know if I can produce something of quality sound in a dorm room, yeah. when I get into like a real studio space, I will know that I'll be able to produce something good. Singing in a apartment or in a dorm room or something like that is very different. Like, I wouldn't be able to think about the fact that I'm in this confined space and people can hear me next door, even though it's like you're singing on a track and people are gonna hear it anyway. How did you get over that hump? I know, I know that that's a difficult thing. I mean, I guess I have dealt with in general, just fright about performing my own music. Like I said, I didn't begin doing that until pretty recently, probably in the last two years. But the purpose is for people to hear it anyway. And I think it's really cool when you do talk to your neighbors and they're like, oh yeah, like hearing the process of where it started, I can hear you through the wall and it was, <laughs> it was really good. Like they'll come over and they'll be like, wow, you guys are working on some great stuff. Let us know when it comes out. So not only are people supportive, but you do have to know, like, you're making music for people to listen to. So no matter where it starts, like, they're hearing a creative process, and that's probably something new for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as long as they're not making noise complaints, we just try to, <laughs> we just try to let them listen in and, you know, hope for the best. Anything I've recorded like that has been, I, I just, I sound like I'm going like this the whole time. <laughs> but it's almost homey, like, especially because... I hang out with these people on a regular basis too. So the same place that we like you were comfortable. watch Netflix and like have a beer is the same place where you get to like have your creative juices flowing. And so I feel like it's very comfortable. Like I almost would be nervous to go to a studio studio just cause it's a little less homey. Like if I have to delete something and re-record it in the living room, I'm like, oh, forget it. Right. But when you're in a studio, you're like, oh, we might have to take that again, guys. They isolate your track and play it back for you in a room yeah. full of people. And then you're like, oh, this is real. Like people are like, hmm, I don't know if you were on key. You're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's try that one again. <laughs> and, and you want to, you, you're embarrassed, but at the same time, it's like, you can't say you weren't and you don't want it to be out there off key. I don't think there's anyone out there who's one take Drake, like <laughs> Beyonce has probably got to even do it a couple of times. You know, there are a lot of times when I retake something just because I feel like, you know, I didn't sound as confident oh, or yeah, the yeah. essence that I wanted to give at that part just wasn't coming through. Like, you have to redo it for abundant reasons. So at that point, it's like, yeah, that one wasn't, that wasn't it. Let's do it again. Well, it's good that you know that rather than ignoring it. It's good to admit when you aren't happy with what you did. That's a, that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, and I'm definitely my bi my biggest critic. Like, people are always like, what do you mean take again? And I'm like, no, no. Like, if there's one hair out of place, I'm like, I can't, I can't have it there. <laughs> How do you go about the writing process? Well, I normally go by picking a beat first, and I start by chorus usually, because that, like, starts the direction of the song. Yeah, I feel like I do start with concepts, like, or a feeling, an event that I'm trying to delve through. I really use my music as therapy. 
sometimes you need people to talk to, but you don't always want to, you know, disclose your information to people. Mm -hmm. So I find through like metaphors and things like that, I can say what I need to say for my closure yeah. without necessarily having to call a staff meeting of everyone who, <laughs> <laughs> like, I've had a problem with yeah. to like delve through those feelings. And so it's really a way for me to become more independent yeah. um, in that way. And so I usually start with a concept, feeling, something like that, and try a chorus, because the chorus is essentially the core of the song, <laughs> is how I think about it. It's the most repetitive part. It's the part that people will remember, and it reoccurs. So I start there, and I just try to build anything else that I needed to say other than the chorus into the verse. like. The verse is where I go more in depth into right. what I was thinking when I wrote the chorus. And then I usually go back for harmonies and build um, because after lyrics comes like right. making it something that you love to listen to. Like I really love harmonies and layers. I feel like that's part of me growing up in a church choir is just knowing that I hear things mm -hmm. in three, I hear things in layers. Like mm -hmm. my mind just automatically goes there. I can never record just one layer. Yeah. And so the whole end process is adding the harmonies and making sure everything sounds full. Yeah. Cause I hate when something sounds empty. Like I just like to fill it with music I, from the beginning to the end. I want it to be like a symphony in your ears. Like it's a bit ambitious. <laughs> I just I don't know. Like and sometimes I'm like, wow, am I am I doing too much here? But I just there's nothing that compares to having like a set of headphones on or your speakers blasting and yes. something is just harmonically gorgeous. You're like, wow, like you look into the sunset, you're like, this is great. Like <laughs> this is great. Do you hear all those layers and notes? Like, beautiful. It doesn't even matter what she said. That's why it comes secondary to the lyrics. I love the idea, though, of starting with the chorus. That's actually really interesting. I never thought of it that way. Where do you find the uh, the beats that you work off of? Do you create them yourself? Is there, like, a pool of beats that you use, or where do you get those? Well, I do work with producers, but I also search online. There are beat-making sites that you can go on mm. online where producers post their music, and you can buy the rights. Mm. And it's very nice and easy. Um, they're up and coming producers in the same way that I'm an up-and-coming song artist so I'm supporting someone else's yeah. business is the way I think of it and you're collaborating with people mm. across seas that you probably would have never met and then it's cool because when you post your music you can say produced by and they yeah. can they yeah. can get plays off of it and they'll hear what oh. you dreamt up over their beats and it's like a really cool collaborative process over the internet. Like. Where, where do you go to get the stuff? Initially, I go to YouTube and then you can go to the producer and they normally have a site. Because I don't necessarily like to use the ones that you find on YouTube because those are the ones that everyone finds. Yeah. But if you have a producer and you're like, wow, I feel like they make really good music, then you can go to their whole site. So. It's really a new a new place every time I try to just search for a beat that speaks to me. And I also work with producers on campus like Quan Logan and Jax. They're two people who make really good beats here. I'd like to eventually find a producer who can produce for me and know my style, but until then, while I am creating a style, I feel like it's fun to just dance around beats, of you course. know? why not? Yeah. <laughs> I just got back from studying abroad in Copenhagen, which is where I wrote some of the music. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I wrote some of the music that is gonna be on this upcoming EP called Signature. There, I write in my room. I, my special place is secretly staircases. Like, hands down, stair staircases have the greatest acoustics I've ever- Public ones or yes, like- Yes, oh, like okay. in dorms and in apartments. Like, cause most people take the elevator and then you'll just have that one person who's taking the stairs and they see you singing in the hall. <laughs> Hallway, but like it's okay <laughs> I've had some great conversations that way they're like oh you just sing it in the hallway I'm like yeah I'm not confident enough to do that <laughs> I mean and it's not so bad because like people you could catch people doing worse things in a hallway like True. I'm sitting here writing a song but what really could be going on in this hallway like <laughs> yeah, yeah. it could be much worse so it's not too exactly. embarrassing and they're usually like hey that sounds pretty good let me know mm -hmm. when it <laughs> comes out do you do this at school too yeah like okay. especially when I lived in the dorms 
people used to know that was my spot. People from the floor above us would be like, oh, there's Synovia singing in the hall. It's just like the same hand clapping table singing that you would do at the lunch table with your friends. I, I had different friends. We didn't entirely do that. that was, you should have been here my freshman year. My first wave cohort was known for just making spur of the moment music That's in the cool. middle of the cafe. And people were like studying around us like, that's pretty good, you know? <laughs> like, making songs about what we're eating for lunch, anything. Oh, I love that. It's always really interesting just to hear how other musicians really get their stuff out there and how they're going to promote what they do. So what are your plans? Well, my plans are to buy a distro kid account, which okay. is basically just distribution. Mm -hmm. And that way I'll be able to get it onto Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, Tidal, all the major sites you can do through that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just one membership you have to buy. For now, I'm going to drop it on SoundCloud just because I want to have it released immediately. Um, I was originally supposed to release it August 27th for my birthday, but there was just... I could tell that some, there was something missing and I was like, I can't put my finger on it, but I know if I release it and I think of it, yeah, I will yeah. never forgive myself. You weren't kidding before when you made that comment that like sometimes you just know when it's not ready and you literally stopped what you were gonna do. Yeah, I. it was literally the day of and I was like, you could press post <laughs> or you could not. And I was like, I will never forgive myself if this isn't perfect mm -hmm. because you can never pull something back right. offline once you post it. And so I'm so glad I yeah. took this second. You can. It, it depends on who archives it. Like, okay, um, yeah, there's several artists out right now. I feel like it's escaping me. But there are people who have released a single, then deleted it, and then created other accounts and an entirely different version of the song put yeah. it out there. I mean, it is online. I mean, you can get rid of it, but I still get what you're going from. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I do know that that is kind of the thing. I, I feel like it's the new method of... Like, if you put out an album and yeah. it was on a disc, you can't go, okay, give those back right. to us, we have a different one. But online, it's like, this is where I go to get it. Oh, wait, it's changed or it's gone. Yeah. So there is that, but I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> I'm just yeah, saying it is I different. Just, you know, I just feel like it's important not to put out work that you're not proud of. It's not that I wasn't necessarily proud. I just knew it wasn't my potential. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I'm not slating you for that at all. Yeah. <laughs> and like you can always release it and I feel like people wouldn't have even thought it was bad but I would have known so it was really for myself this is my first project yeah. that I put out and I really need it to it's called signature yeah. so if I can't sign off on it like how am I gonna put it out there for real and it's so you literally were the one that was gonna be posting it and you're setting it up for all the distribution and all that you don't have yeah. anybody helping you with that no and I am a part of a collective which That's is right. just still struggling and we basically record at a studio together and we collaborate a lot with each other. We use each other for feedback when we're recording and we are probably gonna go and get our distribution together just because um, to do it as a group is probably the smartest way. Yeah. Have our own shows that we book, separate managers, like separate mm -hmm. everything except for the fact that we know that we trust each other with our music. So right. if you need feedback, if you need someone there while recording nice. you, you can come and be like, what does this need? And they'll be like, huh, I feel like you could do this. Or I have an open verse and I'm looking to collaborate. Are you interested? And you can build something together. What about the artwork? Do you have anybody helping you with that? Or are you doing it yourself? For the most part, I do photo shoots for them because I haven't gotten too much into graphically designing them. But um, other than that, I can just design a shoot and a set and I can have someone come and try to get the angles that I need. You know, you try to describe it and set up the scene and make your vision come true that way. I just love that you have people that will help you out in that aspect. That's really cool. And I feel like that is part of what is so good about having the first wave community is I was literally put on this campus with a group of artists looking to work. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, my medium is song, someone else's medium is photography, someone else's medium is producing and recording. And it's like now we can all work on our craft together and we can lift each other up rather than doing it alone. And I think it's a lot easier that way. And it also helps you to make connections that you'll need for success. Like you never know when you'll need someone or when you'll have the opportunity to give someone else an opportunity. Yeah. And so if I know good artists, why would I not help them and vice versa? Do you have any plans to play out of town? Have you played out of town or gone on tour or anything? Well, I've done performances in Europe 
in Copenhagen. You did? Okay. Yeah, I did do shows there, um, and they were really nice. That's they were cool. asking, like, how long I'd be there, and I was only there for a month and a half. Yeah, I'm in college. Me, yeah, I'm like, to... I'm in school, but I'm thinking about it. Like, <laughs> I'm definitely thinking about grad school there. Really? Well, I would definitely consider it just because it seems that in Europe they import music rather than export it. Like, mm -hmm. when you look at their top ten charts, it's all American music. When you go there, they do talk a lot about American artists initially going to Europe to start their careers just because it's less competitive and it's more about the talent than about the business. And I feel like spending a couple years out there to get a fan base would not be a bad move because then when you do come back to the states you already have a fan base that you're working with mm -hmm. and that gives you an upper hand it would also be kind of cool i mean obviously <laughs> i was in europe for a month and a half and i did not want to leave like it was great and i was nervous it was my first time abroad and i was going alone mm -hmm. i go to college in my hometown like <laughs> four blocks from my parents at all times and here altogether. i am Overseas, like I was definitely nervous. I do think YouTube is a great place to post your music just because it's free. Yeah. You don't necessarily need a membership, and I want my music to be available to everyone, like mm -hmm. whether they have an Apple Music account or a mm -hmm. title. Um, I don't want it to be exclusive. Like, I want everyone, if you're looking for my music, I want you to be able to look and find it. So I'll always love YouTube for that. But I do want to get to the Apple Musics and the titles just because you are listening to your mainstream artists. I want mine to be available Oh, to come course. to come up on shuffle as well like you know yeah. if you're listening to Beyonce my song could be next like I definitely want that opportunity too so I want it to be both like if you're seeking Hell, it I out want for that free, opportunity if you're seeking it out for free I want you to be able to find it and if you have your already set playlist I want mine to be able to add just like the rest yeah. of them in shuffle regardless of which one you prefer I still put my stuff like on all of the ones that I can because yeah, it's like you never know who they favor. Yeah, and I just want it to be available to as many people as possible. I never want my music to be like exclusive or very hard to find or you have to pay to be able to listen. Like, that's not what music is about at all. What do you think about people that use your music? Would you be okay with that if people did use your stuff like in the background of videos when your EP comes out? I think I'd be fine with that. I would just want to make sure that there was some kind of crediting to the artist because I feel like that is a big part of collaboration is credit because when you're collaborating you have to make sure all parties are you know getting the benefits that they should be but I mean other than that as long as they talk to me and there's a little blurb at the credits at the end like music by Synovia I'd have no problem with that. I've actually been dealing with people adding my music to like playlists on oh. SoundCloud, which is really cool. Like cool. people put together playlists for studying or for anything. And like just to see my music next to other people who are who I consider great, like having my having my song on someone's study playlist next to like Kalani and like other stars. I'm like that's awesome that you even would think of me in that light. Like I'm always <laughs> flattered. Like I sincerely think that that's the sincerest form of flattery, honestly. Yeah. People were like, "I like working out to her song." <laughs> so, I'm going to put her on my workout playlist like I like to study, I like to sleep yep. with this song on. So, mm -hmm. I just thought that was really great like the way that music can impact people in their regular daily lives, that's all I want. Is mm -hmm. like someone washing their dishes, cleaning up to my music. Like, yes, that's what I do to everyone else's music. That's what I want. That's a really good point. I love that. I think that's the right attitude. I, yeah. I'm always curious, like, there used to be a time when people are like, my music is in their video, they didn't ask me. And it's like, your music is in their video because they like you. And music <laughs> is not made to be hoarded. Like, you make music for people to what? Listen to, for mm -hmm. people to... And so, like, this is just another way for someone to run into your music. Like, I would never get upset about something like that. So I encourage it, in fact. I liked her idea of creating songs from the chorus. I never really actually think of how I'm going to write the song. It just kind of comes, I have an idea in my head, or I play something and then I work around it. Sometimes the thing that I think is going to be the chorus ends up being a verse. I don't know why. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to the show at lorenzosmusic.com where you can also download all of our songs for free or for free use. 
Also, I'd like to mention that I have a new season of my art podcast coming out this week, and that's called American Bandito, where I talk with Jessica Abel, the graphic novel artist. You can listen to that at AmericanBandito.com. Next week, I talk to the guy that runs the Ubuntu Studio operating system, an entire platform that's meant for recording and producing music, art, and film. And it's free. And it was what our entire last album was built on. So I'll talk with you next time.